Hey guys, I'm Gus here to react to the movie Sanctum. As a matter of fact, I actually spent a few hours today going through the movie and reacting to all of the segments about cave diving. The movie is obviously an hour and a half or whatever, but only about a third of it or less actually includes or focuses in the actual diving per se. Um, the result was it was a it was the biggest video. I've made so far. It's an hour and 12 minutes long. It's a pretty long video. And I was pretty excited to show you, you know, the results of it because I spent a lot of time kind of breaking down everything and, and going through some examples and kind of giving you the clarity that you asked for when you, you know, asked for, for these videos to be reacted to or reviewed by me or Woody. And you know, as soon as I uploaded, I got a copyright strike from several agencies. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do something that I haven't done before, which is I'm going to share my screen so you can see kind of behind the scenes what I can see on my side. So here is, you know, the, the latest video, as you can see, uh, Cave Diver reacts to the movie Sanctum. Uh, I uploaded it earlier today, and as you can see, it has zero views. And the reason for that is because I received a copyright claim, as you can see. So I'm going to go into the options just so, you, just so you can see kind of what's happening behind the scenes. So here it is. It's, um, like I mentioned, an hour and 12 minutes, an hour and 12 minutes and 17 seconds, as you can see right there. And it says the video is partially blocked. But look where it's blocked, right? So if I open this up, I mean, notice... There's about a hundred countries or territories where the movie's blocked, which is basically most of the world. It's blocked in the United States, it's blocked in the UK, Canada, Australia, Germany, and 92 other territories and countries, uh, which makes it impossible for most of you watching this video to actually find it. If you happen to be in a territory that is not listed, in here, let's say you're from Colombia or you're from Chile or whatever, uh, you know, places that are not listed in here. And I don't know if those places are listed in here. I didn't read the whole list. I'm just throwing names out there. Um, then you'll be able to see it if you want to watch the whole hour and 12 minutes of me breaking down the movie and kind of going through every, you know, scene and, you know, the ridiculous amount of nonsense that is present in the movie Sanctum. Um, but uh, if you're not there, then you're kind of, it's kind of invisible to you. The video is publicly listed, so it's publicly available. There's nothing special about it. It's not unlisted or private or anything. It's just that if you look for it, you can't see it if you're in one of these territories. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you should get a VPN and use a connection from another country and be able to reach it. I don't think my videos are that special or are at that level where you should bother to find a way to connect to it and watch it. I'm not going to encourage you to do that. So I'll give you kind of my summary of the movie Sanctum. If that's enough for you, then good, because I still want to kind of give you my thoughts on it. Um, but uh, if you want to see more detailed information, like I said, over an hour long, uh, I spent on this, on this whole thing, then... You, you kind of have to find a way to, to get there. My recommendation actually is, you know what? Get a vacation. Find a place that is not here like Seychelles or perhaps the Maldives. Go on a nice vacation. And while you get there, why don't you watch A Cave Diver Reacts to the movie Sanctum, right? Uh, just enjoy it uh, because, again, I'm pretty disappointed that it's being blocked all over the place. But anyway, let's just take this off the screen and let's talk about the movie Sanctum. So before we move forward, I just want to say, um, spoiler alert, there will be spoilers on what I'm about to talk about. So if you want to sit down through an hour and a half of James Cameron's masterpiece called Sanctum, uh, go ahead and watch that first before you come here and listen to kind of my thoughts on the movie. All right. So once again, fair warning, I'm about to talk about the whole movie, everything that happens all the way to the end. 
So if you haven't seen the movie and you still want to watch that and not wanting me to spoil the fun, then stop the video right now. Go watch that. So the movie is based on an actual accident that happened, I think it was in 99, I don't remember, or maybe in 1989, something like that. It's been, it's been a while, a few decades, where these 13 cave divers went in into these caves that are pretty awesome, by the way. I would totally love to go there. And because they're under a desert, it's kind of like science is having a hard time understanding why these caves even exist. They're full of salt water and they're in the middle of the desert. So imagine like you were in the Sahara Desert and under the dunes, there's like a network of caves that are, you know, filled with salt, perfect, you know, visibility kind of water. So um, they made an expedition. They went there to dive these caves. And in the middle of it, a freak storm happened in the middle of the desert once again, which it never rains there. But in the middle of their dives and their expedition, this freak storm happened. The cyclone or whatever happened, you know, rained uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of, um, you know, water essentially. And it blocked their exit. So they were all trapped inside the cave. Now, unlike the movie Sanctum, it's not where everyone but one person died right? That's not how it works. They were rescued. They made it through. Um, and again, the movie Sanctum is based on that story of those divers that kind of got trapped on a cave diving expedition. Beyond that, I think everything else is pretty much made up. Uh, for example, the divers that were on the original expedition, they were actually uh, diving open circuit, which means they were using tanks, uh, regular tanks to dive these caves. On the movie Sanctum, they use rebreathers. And I think they were, they changed this later on, but the rebreathers were kind of like a big uh, part of the story. There's a lot of drama around the rebreathers. And uh, there's a lot of drama about somebody stealing one of the working units and and whatnot. There's a lot to do with rebreathers. Uh, so obviously me as a rebreather cave diver or CCR cave diver, um, I know exactly how these things work. I know exactly what they should be setting up in order to do a cave dive. And according to the movie, again, these guys are explorers. They're cave explorers trying to find the connection between the cave system and the sea. So if you're a cave explorer, by the way, it's a whole nother level that I'm not even I'm not even part of, and I don't want to be a part of uh, Cave Exploration Club. Um, you know that is that those are the divers that I look up to, um, but they they are at another level from cave divers. Like I think cave divers, and I've explained this before, are at a higher level than regular divers in terms of skills and trim and buoyancy and just straight up not panicking if something goes wrong because we can just go up to the surface we're inside a cave uh, and then beyond that there's another level the tip of the spear there are cave explorers so these guys are supposed to be cave explorers and they make so many mistakes that are just blatant rookie nonsense mistakes um, and just overall just dive wise doesn't make any sense whatsoever like the the physics of diving th they don't make sense for example they are inside a cave, and as they get set up for the first dive of the movie, I notice they're not bringing any bailout bottles or any bailout tanks, which is suicidal. I mean, it's it makes no sense whatsoever for them not to have a bailout system. A bailout system, for those of you who are wondering what the hell that is, is basically a, a way for us to, if something happens to our rebreather, we can bail out to open circuit, meaning we will now become a regular tank scuba diver, just like you've seen people scuba dive forever, right? So our rebreathers essentially is a, is a personalized one person submarine system where you breathe out and your breath gets cycled through the rebreather. And there's a chemical reaction and based on the absorbent that we have on the rebreather that strips out the CO2 and injects a little bit of oxygen to uh, essentially supply the one that your body absorbed from your previous breath. And it, it supplies it back to you. So when I breathe out, 
on my rebreather, the counter lungs fill in with the breath that I just breathed out, and the CO2 gets you know removed out of it. A little bit of oxygen is added, and then when I breathe in, I'm breathing in my same breath with just a little bit of oxygen and all of the CO2 kind of stripped out of it. That's how a rebreather works. So I have one breath, and I'm breathing that over, 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 and over again. It's kind of like if you took a, a paper bag and you kind of breathe into it over, over, and over again, that's kind of how it works, except oxygen is injected into it every time you breathe, so you don't pass out eventually. Because when you do it on a paper bag, I assume you, pi you pass out of hypoxia at some point or lack of uh, oxygen. So the point is, you have this rebreather system that allows you to have super long dives, let's say three, five hour long dives. It all depends on the scrubber life, and I talk about this in detail on the long video, but... If that rebreather fails for whatever reason, then we have to go into open circuit, which means we have bailout bottles. We bail out. That's the whole point. That's what they're called bailout bottles. So we bring these bottles in, and it, and this is in every single rebreather dive. Like every rebreather dive, you bring a bailout system, uh, which is a bottle. If it's a you know, a dive at sea and it's pretty shallow, I bring in a 40 cubic feet tank of gas, which is typically air if it's a dive, if it's a dive that is shallower than 40 meters or 130 feet. So I will have air, which if something fails, even at the deepest portion of the dive on the worst case scenario, breaking case of emergency, I can go into this tank and make it to the surface. That is what the 40 is for. 40 cubic feet, by the way, is half the size of a standard scuba tank. The scuba tanks or cylinders are typically 80 cubic feet. The one that we bring in most dives that are in the open seas is 40. So it's half the size because, again, you only use it if you run into an emergency. So I'm, you know, right at the bottom looking around. My rebreather magically just blows up. No problem. Just let it go grab my regulator from the tank. Now all I have to do is get to the surface. I'm not gonna continue diving. So half a tank of what a regular diver has is plenty to make it to the surface. So that's a bailout tank. So these knuckleheads are inside a cave and they're supposed to be explorers. And they somehow they just strap a rebreather on which are totally made up. Uh, these rebreathers, they're, they're diving with full face masks. You can see it on the picture for the poster of the movie, uh, which is total nonsense. No cave diver dives with full face mask. Okay. And and again, I don't want to generalize because somebody will be like, oh, you know, I know so, such and such guy in Tanzania who dives with. Okay. There might be somebody out there that will do it. But by far, like, I've personally have never, ever seen a diver inside a cave or going into a cave or coming out of a cave or related to cave diving, not even in pictures with a full face mask. And I have a lot of Facebook friends that are cave divers. And I have never seen one of them with a full face mask going into a cave. Some of them are, for example, public service divers, which look for, you know, victims of drowning and, you know, stuff like that in lakes. They do dive with a full face mask because the advantage of the face mask is that you have comms, you have a radio, you can talk. Uh, you can talk to each other. You can talk to surface support, right? So somebody at the surface, you can talk to them. Hey, I found it, whatever it is. Um, so, so that's the advantage of a full face mask. So if you're doing that kind of diving that you're looking for a body, for example, and you find it, then you want to have that radio and communicating because there might be a team of 10, 20 people or whatever searching. And if one person found it, you don't want to just you know, let the other 19 keep searching. So through the radio, you will be like, hey, guys, we found it, whatever, and everybody comes out. So that makes sense on, a, on one of those dives. So I reach out to Mike Young, which I've talked about uh, in this channel before. He's a cave explorer. He's the owner of Kiss Rebreathers, which are the rebreathers I dive with. Total stud. And I ask him, have you ever seen, because this guy has been cave diving since before it was cool. Like, you know, he's been cave diving forever. And I asked him, have you ever seen a cave diver with a full face mask? And he said, the only times I've seen it is for filming. So he films documentaries for National Geographic, Discovery Channel, like that kind of thing. And 
if there's a film crew, they have to talk to each other to set up shots or whatever it is. Like, okay, you go that way. I'm going to stay this way or whatever. So those are the only times where he has seen cave divers use full face masks. Other than that, if you're just exploring a cave or cave diving, like these guys were not filming a movie. Uh, they're just, you know, in the movie, they're just exploring. Uh, there's absolutely no way that they are going to be using a full face mask, especially one that is built into a rebreather because a rebreather is a loop. You don't have a backup loop or a backup rebreather. It's just the two hoses. And if they go directly into the mask and any one of the 1,000 parts that your mask will have at that point fail, then your rebreather is useless and you have to bail out. And these idiots didn't even have a bailout tank. So it's just total, complete nonsense from the setup perspective. Um, you know, and, and you can see, and I pause sometimes on the video to kind of showcase how this thing was put together. Like they would have a regular open circuit mask and they would attach like the loop of a, of a rebreather below it with like zip ties or whatever. They, they were made believe these are not real. I will say though, that there are some, um, rebreathers out there that have a full face mask, but th they didn't use those at all in the movie. They were just complete made up. Um, and, and I don't think they used a, a single unit that was legit. But um, the point is, you know, so that that was one big inconsistency. I mean, I, I point all of that out. It, it was just straight up suicidal. The other thing was the gas management did not make sense at all. So at some point they grab these tanks for bailout tanks and the tanks are clearly labeled oxygen, right? They have stickers on them and we are supposed to like any tank that has more than the regular air right the mix of regular air which is 21 percent oxygen and 78 percent nitrogen and one percent of other gases um you know any tank that has more than 21 percent should be clearly labeled with either nitrox which is you know a, a higher mix of oxygen in the air or Oxygen, for example, or trimix or heliox or whatever, you know, whatever gas you put in the bottle, it should be clearly labeled, especially oxygen bottles. And why are oxygen bottles special more than all of them? It's because oxygen, and by the way, this is one of the mysteries of science, oxygen is toxic, 100% oxygen is toxic below 20 feet, six meters of depth. If you bring an oxygen tank and go, let's say, to 50 feet, right, and you start breathing from it, you will have a seizure and drown, all right? It's just death. It's straight up drowning. We don't know why. We have no idea why that happens. We just know it happens. And we tested it in a bunch of, you know, U.S. Navy guys back in the day. They were the, um, you know, the guinea pig. Obviously, they didn't do it on the water. They did it on a on a compression chamber, right? They put you like down as if you were at 50 feet. They make you, you know, breathe oxygen. You start having seizures, and then they bring you back up, and you don't die. You don't drown. The problem is when you do it on the water, if you have a seizure, regulator out of the mouth, now you drown, all right? So it's not that you're going to die because of the seizure. You die because of the drowning. The point is oxygen below 20 feet is toxic, all right? You cannot breathe it is poison. You breathe it, you have a seizure, you drown, period. These guys are talking about how they're in this super deep cave, you know, and that they have to do all this decompression and, you know, all of the, it's just like, like techno babble. It's just, a, it's just come on, is is nonsense for non-divers. It, it literally makes no sense um, because if they're carrying oxygen with them, and they are in this dive, then it's clearly a very shallow dive. And with a rebreather, you know, we have, when, you, when you're a diver, you have a no decompression limit, which is basically, you know, how much time do you have to do a dive before you start having a mandatory stop for decompression? So when you're doing a dive, for example, let's say you want to go down to 60 feet, which is 20 meters. You want to go down to 20 meters and look at fish. Cool, no problem. You can do that dive for 60 minutes. That's your no decompression limit. I always remember 60-60 because it's easy. So within 60 minutes, if you go to 60 feet, um, you can come up at any time for any reason. You have any problem, like uh, you're running low on air, uh, you think you saw a ghost, you saw a shark and freaked out, 
I don't know, you need to pee and you don't want to pee on your wets. Whatever reason, you go to the surface, no problem. You don't have to do mandatory stops or decompression stops. Past 60, right, now you're looking at decompression, which means you no longer have the option to go to the surface for whatever reason. You have to stop and decompress or else you have you can suffer of decompression sickness, which can cause up to death. It's not necessarily sure death, but it could be deadly, okay? So once again, these guys are so shallow and they're diving rebreathers that at the depth they were at, they there's no chance they can accrue any decompression. And they're talking about in the movie like, well, if we go explore this, we're gonna have a two hour decompression. You know, what are you talking about? Two-hour decompression is bananas for what they were doing. It, it makes no sense. And I struggle to come up with like a good example for people that are non-divers to understand. So for people who are divers uh, and even non-divers, I think a good example is, you know, when you go to a very deep cave like Eagle's Nest, Eagle's Nest in Florida is 320 feet. So almost 100 meters, like 95, 96 meters. That is very deep. At that depth, with a rebreather like they had, like I use, we accrue about five minutes of decompression for every minute that we spend at the bottom. So if I'm inside the cave and I look around for 20 minutes, that's one hour of decompression, okay? So these guys, and you can see it in the movie, it's a super short dive on a super short, shallow cave, and they're talking about that they have to do two hours of decompression. What are you talking about? It makes no sense at all. Um, and so it, the, the list goes on and on and on and on and on with the nonsense. So for those of you who asked me to review the movie Sanctum, expecting for me to be like, it's one of the most realistic movies I've ever seen. No, it makes no sense whatsoever. Um, everything was exaggerated and, you know, stuff was added to it for no reason. Um you know, it, it, I, I hope that you all can gain access to, to the long video if you're really, really interested in doing that. Um, you know, I debated maybe coming up with options and say, you know, for subscribers, maybe we open up, you know, the email uh, address so people can email us if they really want a link to the movie and I'll, I'll provide a link to it, uh, host it separately so you can download it and watch it if you want to. Because at this point, it's like a movie kind of. It's over an hour long. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to give you kind of a summary, and I realize that we're over 20 minutes. It's funny that we're talking about a summary, but that's kind of how these videos go. I really, really apologize. I wish the whole video was hosted. Um, there's actually even a little video of me bombing through Buford Spring on a DPV, like um, like a cave diving DPV, which is a diver propulsion vehicle because they use them on the movie. And I I, I kind of wanted to show you what that looks like because my, DV, my DPV is pretty awesome. Um, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to give you, again, a quick quick summary of what I saw with Sanctum. Uh, the movie has a lot of drama, a lot of back and forward, a lot of violence. Obviously, you can't kill everyone but one without violence. Uh, but just in terms of the diving, just the pure diving of it, it was straight up nonsense. Uh, somebody in the movie dives. Uh, dies of DCS, decompression sickness, which again, they're so shallow that there is just no chance that can happen. Um, but this guy just up and up just dies of DCS. Like what? It, what? It would be like diving on hypothermia in the Sahara Desert. That Like that's how absurd that is. Like, oh, he just he was just walking around Dubai on the streets and he just died of hypothermia. You'll be like, well, what am I missing here? Like, that makes no sense at all. That's how that was when I watched that thing. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, just equipment wise, there's just a, a lot of stuff like, um, you know, and, and just little picky things. And I, I, I try not to be super picky about it. Like they're they're messing with oxygen right next to an open flame, which is basically a bomb. Um, you know, that's that's one thing you learn pretty early when you get into rebreathers because we have to work with 100% oxygen um, that you don't mess with oxygen when it comes to fires or it's super, super combustible. So uh, these guys have like an open flame right next to an oxygen can and they're opening it and closing it. It's like, oh my God, like these guys are total imbeciles. Um, 
But other than that, it was kind of entertaining. I mean, I didn't get bored at all. It was more about just eye roll after eye roll. Like, this is insane and ridiculous. Um, so it was very, very unrealistic. So if you're looking for Hollywood versus reality, Sanctum just got a 1 out of 10. Um, and that one is only because in some scenes, they use actual cave divers for the diving shots. So they're doing proper frog kicks. They're like, it looks legit. The guys are doing a good job. Uh, one guy's running a line and he does a secondary tie off that looks legit on a rock. Obviously, those were not the actors. They were paid extras. And I know that there were a lot of instructor trainers and cave divers that were involved with the project. They were probably the divers that were replacing the actors. This movie wasn't shot in a cave. It was shot in a studio, just like almost everything James Cameron does. But, um, you know, a lot of those scenes I was watching and I'm like, that's legit. Like the trim, the kicks, all of that, how they were moving through the cave was awesome, and that's because they used legitimate cave divers for those shots. But then whenever there's an actor on it, it just, you know, back to uh, kicking or whatever. The actors did learn how to scuba dive. They got certified, which was cool. Um, great, you know, perk of the, of the business. But, um, you know, you can tell when there are actors on the shot versus when they were actual divers. So you can, you can pretty much tell that if you have any other suggestions, uh, please let me know. Also help us get to a thousand subscribers. We have received as part of dive talk, uh, gear for review, uh, free gear that, you know, some companies send us, that, you know, for us to provide uh, our feedback as cave divers and as instructors, you know, how we would use or recommend this stuff. And we want to give it all away. So uh, we set up a thousand subscribers as our first milestone to give away some of these uh, lights that are very expensive dive lights and very high quality dive lights. But we want to give it away to our, to our, um, you know, our subscribers and obviously more stuff to come. Uh, we'll be uh, giving away stuff. We'll be do, doing meetups and, and meeting with some people and, and all of that. But uh, you need to help us with uh, your subscription. So if you're watching this and you're not a subscriber and you enjoyed the channel, you learned some stuff, it's free. I mean, go ahead, hit it. Actually, let's do this. Let's do it all together on three, right? So everybody get ready with your, you know, mouse pointer right over the subscribe button. Are you ready for this? Three, two, one, bang. Everyone at the same time. How cool was that? Pretty good, right? Feels good. So once again, thank you so much, guys. Um, really enjoy reviewing this thing. I hope you get to see the whole video. We'll see you on the next one with another Cave Diver Reaction video. See you soon.